recently, I got in contact with an old friend who really helped me along in this hobby. Uh, at first, you know, I had, you know, I had a blog. I was writing articles about how I was building these models. I was totally an amateur modeler. Somebody who uh, hit the ground running, I guess you could say, as I do everything, you know, everything's, I jump in with both feet and go for the gusto. You know, if you're gonna do something, you might as well do it good, I say. So, one of the people who really affected my career early, in the early days, actually it was two people. Uh, Joe LeMay, who is someone who I consider as a mentor. Uh, you know, there's always somebody in your life who will tell you just to forget about all the crap and just get down to working. You know, if you make a mistake, take the, have the patience to paint it over and do it over again. If you've ever heard me say this advice to you in past videos, that came from Joe. That came from Joe LeMay, excuse me. On the other hand, the person who I really give credit for pushing me in this hobby to actually be accomplished or get, you know, the contacts in the hobby was through Mark Williams, the founder of Imagine That Laser Art. And uh, I didn't work for Mark per se. I did what most amateur modelers do when they get into the business. They volunteer. Uh, and I volunteered for Mark to do a bunch of different things. I worked for him, I built his website, I made money doing that. So, I decided uh, recently to uh, do an interview with Mark. So what you're about to see is some of the most detailed, realistic, thinking outside of the box modeling you've ever seen. And I'm talking to all of you. All of you people who think that you've been in this hobby long enough that you've seen everything. Maybe you've wrote the book on the hobby. This is the stuff you haven't seen before. And if you really pay attention to what's going on here, it's not something that is a gift. This isn't a gift. The gift is, is what Joe said to me. If you've got an idea, just do it. If you screw up, do it over again. And that's the secret to thinking outside of the box. I want to introduce to you my friends, Joe LeMay and Mark Williams. Today's video is brought to you by Helicon Focus. Helicon Focus is the photo stacker that makes the most clear photographs that you could ever make. To get 20% off a lifetime license of Helicon Focus, go to modelersguild.com slash HF. And we thank Helicon Focus for their support of our show. And by and Model. And Model has been making model railroad electronics since 2007. And with their affiliation with Pico and their smart switch, you can find them in Europe and in North America. Smart switch switches your switches and animates your <laughs> models. <laughs> this is where the music comes in. Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, right there in the background is the Rapido layout. That's going uh, to Jason Strawn for his new EPT-1, that British train. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good. So I've got uh, Joe LeMay here and Mark Williams uh, for a Meet the Modeler chat. These two guys are uh, two people who have really affected my modeling career over the years. Uh, they really got gave me my start. Mark gave me my start. And Joe really mentored me with a few tips and tricks while building a show layout. Uh, the Imagine That Laser Art show layout. Mark Williams is the founder of Imagine That Laser Art. We all know that uh, Imagine That Laser Art is now owned by Nick Masny. Uh, Joe, or Joe and Mark uh, kind of molded the company into what it is today. Uh, so uh, welcome to the show, guys, and hey. thanks for coming on. Not a problem. Good stuff. So uh, the first thing I really want to uh, get is, uh, you know, talk to Mark about the art. 
because that stuff is so fascinating to me. Uh, my father grew up in Windsor, Ontario, and uh, if you walk down the streets of uh, Broulard, which is, you know, it's, it's a heavy part of town, but uh, it was, it, it's called Ford City. It's where the Ford uh, auto plant is in Windsor. It's pretty much littered with uh, the influence of Mark Williams. Uh, maybe talk a bit about what that is, maybe show us some pictures and stuff. Uh, talk about your art, Mark. Not a problem. Uh, Ford City, like you were saying, it was a city unto its own because of the auto industry, which was a real unique history gathering that I did. And uh, Ford loaned me off to the city of Windsor to be art director for a project for a make work program for individuals with art talent. So we did that and started by painting murals up and down the street. And this was over a period of three years. And the train show up with probably about 20 or 30 people in airbrush painting, murals, and large scale stuff. And at the same time, I got into doing a sculpture for uh, the city, Ford City also, which led to what I'm kind of doing today still. I shouldn't say kind of, I am doing still today. But it opened a few doors for me also. But it got me into history. Mm -hmm. That's where all this laser art stuff eventually came from too because it uh, sparked some great interest, interest in architecture and buildings and factories and it just grew from there. So so let's before we move on though when we're talking about murals we're not just talking about you know a, a sign in a window we're talking about an entire wall you know stuff that these kids are graffitiing these days you know like like maybe we should we should uh, break to some photographs of this to really get a, pe a feel of what the size of this stuff is. You can't miss Mark's work. You know, you go down to the waterfront in Windsor. There's a the old passenger station, and it's literally got sculptures climbing out of the roof, and it's all the you know. Here's one of the pieces you're referring to. This is on Lard. This was one of the walls on Lard. You, you said created. this is the one that started it all, isn't it? Well, actually, no. The one that started it all, I, unfortunately, I don't have on this computer, but it was 80 feet long, 15 feet high, and was painted inside Ford Motor Company. Oh, okay. So this was the one that kind of started the street, made it uh, a key point. Yeah, so that bronze sculpture there with a mural behind it. Yes. Um, I'm going to bounce off of it for a minute. Um, I'm sure you see all this junk, but here's one of the ones that was in Ford's. This wasn't a really huge one, but uh, good size at, as it was. So a lot of the viewers are also these uh, NASCAR fans. Uh, you, you painted a lot for these NASCAR-sponsored uh, events, didn't you? Yeah, actually I did. And, well, Ford's uh, sent me over to the track gave me some great pit passes and I managed to gather up a, a quite a collection of photos which these ones are if anybody in NASCAR Davey Allison long gone now he's right here depicted in the picture Morgan Shepherds there Bill Elliott Mark Martin and this was back in the oh, early 90s mm. this particular piece so it was kind of cool to to get all that together kind of cool that's super cool <laughs> yeah I'm trying to find a way. Oh, there we go. Now I see where we're at. Um, and though we did our waterfront too, this was one from there. This was a, a comfort station on Riverside Drive that they have, and uh, we painted the classic cars all the way around it. This was a again a joint project we did with uh, training everybody. Is that the oh so? So you didn't paint this, you were mentoring uh, artists. Well this part right here I painted and some of the others got into to joining in. Can we oh. make it bigger? There we go, that's bigger. Yeah. Um, and this is the passenger station on the waterfront? This is actually, this was really, I, I got a real kick out of the city because they really jumped in full heartedly with me. This station had been taken down, would have been the Windsor station on River, Windsor's waterfront where everybody, all the passenger trains came into and everything. Well, it has been torn down. Yeah. Now, 
today there was a block building there and with a flat top roof. And I said to the city of Windsor, wouldn't it be cool if we put the same roof on that the old station had? Oh, mock it up. And they did. Huh. So as you can see, even the braces are in there and the, the style is all up on the top. So it was uh, quite impressive that they carried and did that. And it's still standing down there today with the murals, so it's kind of cool. Yeah. That one's got sculptures on it as well, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Uh, here's a good shot of it up close. Yeah, so there's an iconic great skyline. Yeah. So it, it's kind of neat that the city took it on and put this whole roof on it. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that that was a facade. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is just washrooms, actually, from the other side, so they could use it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice facility. And this was another one that was inside the Ford Motor Company that we did. Oh, wow. Which was kind of cool. Each one of these panels, these are four by eight sheets, so that's four feet there. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six panels for that. Nice. That's a good size. Now, how hard, like, uh, you know, drawing this on a piece of paper is one thing. You know, sketching it out is one thing. But to blowing it up, <laughs> how, yeah. how, do, you, do you use projectors or? No, this was uh, what I just did. I had a, a rendering that I worked from, a master plan. And it was one inch scale, and this is one foot scale. So you just filled in the squares. Oh, wonderful. Just like high school. <laughs> Not easy, right? Yeah, just like high school, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fill in the squares. So that was kind of cool. Um, trying to see what this one showed you. I think we did. No, we didn't. Or did I show you that one? This one is another one. This start. This was the first mural to go on Ford City and Drulard. Yeah. This building has now since been torn down, and so is the artwork gone, unfortunately. Oh, no. Yeah. At least we got the photograph. Yeah. La last night I was thinking to myself, we could really do... Uh, you know, the, the Google Maps, the Google Street View in oh, yeah. Windsor and see your artwork, you know, yeah. which is so, it's pretty remarkable. Yeah, it is actually, especially with today's technology, you're right. Yeah. Um, just trying to see another one that might work with all that. You're working on another sculpture right now that's going on the, the waterfront. Are you allowed to talk about that or is that secret secret? Well, yeah, we can always talk about these things. <laughs> this was another one inside the whole hallways of Fords. Oh yeah, you did a you did a bunch of uh... the wall was the the hallway was 500 feet, and I did both sides, so mm. it's a set of paintings. Yeah, you, uh, the piece I am doing today, like you were referring to, is Chief Tecumseh on horseback and General Brock life size. Oh my goodness! In a bronze. So. <laughs> It, when I showed you that first picture, I'm going to say where it went again. Well, here's that one. Uh, the first one was here, okay? Yeah. And in front of that, this was a smaller replica of the same scene, but here's that one being built. Oh, cool. And that's life size. So now today, of course, like I said, I'm doing Tecumseh and General Brock, so it's kind of cool. Now, are you doing it yourself, or are you still mentoring people? Oh, this is on my own, yeah. The mentoring stopped. Ford's called me back after three years, and that was night, or that was year 2000 when uh, the industry started to change. Oh. They brought me, after a, a run of almost 15 years, they loaned me to this, uh, or I did murals, and then they loaned me out. Then they called back because of the downturn in the auto industry, and Ford's was the first that picked up on the problems coming. But it uh, made big problems for me because I actually had to go back to work. <laughs> 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 it wasn't fun. <laughs> I was pretty spoiled. Yeah. But uh, it, was go it was good. But it led to a lot of great things. Um, this is another piece that was created for Willistead Classic Car Show. It was, became a trophy. This was through Fords also, and we made 110 of them. Wonderful. It's, it's remarkable the realism in these in these sculptures. Like when you see one face to face, it's just a jaw dropper. Right. This is this is a bronze that was created for Ford Motor Company, which is over in the Triple E building and Ford headquarters. It's kind of neat. Oh, so your work's uh, on both sides of the borders. Oh yeah, <laughs> it gets around. 
Uh, and you had said that it kind of led to other things, it, and the sculpturing did, and I, I did a piece for the Battle of 1812 here in Amherstburg, and this particular one was the first phase of that, and then there was uh, two more individuals added to it, which I'll probably show you from another uh, folder that I have here. Two more? Oh, I've only seen these. I only seen it with these two. I seen the the cannon in your shop. You actually yeah. had the cannon in your shop, and yeah. two, two gentlemen. Yeah. And now there's two more added, and and I maybe I can find that from here right now. Don't know why my screen's doing that multiplexing there. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I got to go back to the beginning here somewhere here. We'll go back to here. You have to kind of maybe put me on a small screen for a minute. I don't know how you do that. Well, oh, look. Well, look at me for a minute. There you go. Maybe I'll pick my nose. <laughs> <laughs> now, these were actually uh, some of the reenactment they did up in uh, Townsville, which was pretty cool. So Man. I'll just fill in some of the works that I know that you've done. Uh, there was a, a firefighter memorial. Right um, here. Sculpture that you did. There you are. Uh, what, th That's the firefighters. Yeah, this was from that fire truck that tipped over in the early 2000s? No. Or what was it? This I was approached by the Windsor Fire Department. It was a memorial for fallen uh, firefighters. And this will be on the waterfront in Windsor, but it hasn't gotten there yet. They're still waiting for a piece of property. The piece is completed, but uh, it's still waiting for a piece of property. So it's at Foundry? Uh, actually, this picture is, yes, it is finished now, and it's uh, out of the safety park that they have, so it's sitting there waiting for a piece of property. Cool. Oh, here, that's the other one. So this, this fort, so that's in Windsor, and uh, this fort, the, the cannon stuff is in Amherstburg, Ontario, across right. from uh, Bablo, the old Bablo Island. Yep. We're kind of... Jumping all over the place here. That's all good. That's the way we do. We're, we're good. Uh, actually, for the viewers, uh, the the spread of art that we're, we're going to talk about is going to be so, like, I'm probably going to have to cut this video in two. This was the beginning of the one. It's just kind of, it's interesting because it shows you how it, it starts to be built. It's built on a metal frame, and then it's styrofoam. None of the detail is brought in in these areas yet, but it, you can see it's starting to take its form. So that's clay put that's over clay. the styrofoam? Right. So the styrofoam is the, is the bulk of the space, and you just kind of put the details on with clay. Right. That's correct. Uh, and it moved along. As you see, there's a lot of neat things. Like you guys are probably oogling. Oh, I want to see that. Oh, we'll get there. Yeah, you can basically, actually, a lot of this stuff is available on Google search, so. Uh, yeah, this is a, the other character that was added, and this guy's been shot. You see the bullet hole in his shoulder, and this was the clay again. So you see how that one's advanced in clay form. As you can see the pain. Yeah. It hurts. It hurts. <laughs> Medic! Yeah. I'm not, I go, after all that, I can't find it. Not there. Oh well, we you know we'll stumble across it sometime. Act the, you know it, it's. This know, is a, the clay when it was at the foundry. That gives you a good idea of the one piece that was added. Mm hmm. So realistic. Yeah, it, it's pretty cool. It, it, it with it on the waterfront makes a quite an attraction. And those things are heavy. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I remember pushing one in, or a few of them into your trailer, and they're, they're heavy. And, and you, once you start moving a piece of art that looks this good, you start sweating bullets. <laughs> <laughs> it really is top heavy. It, it can be pretty heavy, yeah. Oh, come on. oh maybe in here. Oh, here's that fireman that, that was finished. There it is. Oh, beautiful. Look at that. There's, that was neat. I saw the cannon next. And here's the can, and there's the two guys added into the scene. Now, it's pretty interesting. They went and put this fence around it. I was really disappointed about it. But, you know, the powers to be, they, they get really worried and concerned. There's a barracks right here that the Marine group works from. One day they looked out. A father's got his little child out there, and they've got him up on this guy's shoulder. 
Uh, of course, the first thing that goes through their minds is liabilities. This kid's going to fall and crack his head open and the whole bit. So they decide they better put a fence around it. So kind of took some of the excitement away. But uh, as you can see from the picture, you can still get some good shots of it the way it is in the park now. But it is unfortunate they had to do that. The fence basically only keeps out people who can't jump over it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And when you see it from the other way, other angle, behind me is the Detroit River. So this was actually a scene from a ship. So it, it's kind of unique that it is in the fence in a way, because when you look from the other direction, it's like you're on board. Oh, wow. You're looking out. So it's kind of neat that way. Cool. And here's another one of the Ford paintings that was pretty neat. Yeah, these are unbelievable. And that one's uh, 16 feet long, 8 feet tall. <laughs> Just a small one. You know, I remember when I first went into your shop, and all I did was I had my hand on my chin. I was just shaking my head with that gaping jaw. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, another one I did. This is a war memorial down on Riverside Drive on the Detroit River. Yeah. And showing the Spitfire, the Hurricane, and the Lancaster. This was when it was just installed. The gardens aren't even in here in this picture yet, so we just got it installed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me and the boy have a picture of us uh, in front of that. <laughs> Pretty neat. It's kind of a neat shot. Is that a Lancaster? Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, an eight-foot wingspan on that one. Is that the one in Dieppe? Park? Yep. Yeah. Dieppe Gardens, yep. Beautiful. So that's uh, kind of a, well, this was a, another one that was done inside Fords. I'm not sure how long this one is. It's a good size. But these, all these people, of course, they all worked at Fords. And it was kind of neat. They all go and make reference to themselves after. And the uh, resemblance of them is really strong. They're, they're, they're pretty accurate. It was pretty neat. Wow. They're kind of, they'd bring their families in and everybody would see everybody. It was kind of nice. And where that had led to uh, a strange one day, a gentleman and a woman came into the plant with another, with a sales rep and announced that they were from General Motors. Now here they are inside Ford Motor Company. In the belly of the hive. Yeah. Asking me to do a mural at St. Therese at the Pontiac Firebird plant, <laughs> which I did. Oh, did you have to ask permission, or? I thought I'd better, so I, I didn't tell them that they were in the plant either, so it was <laughs> it was kind of interesting at that. So how did you get started in art? Did you, were you always, uh, you know, immediately gifted with, you know? Well, only, chi only child, and you make your own entertainment, so that's what it was. I, I hear you. And uh, unlike the kids today, and Joe, Joe will even stand up by that one, is, you know, these kids, they sit in front of their computers, and that's it. You never see them outside. Yeah. We'd be outside digging holes in the ground, making forts, and climbing on trees, and having battles with uh, winter pears and apples, and, you know, we had a, a life. <laughs> I wonder how many kids come home covered in mud these days, yeah. Uh, I can remember being stuck in a field up yeah. to my waist in it. Yeah, one, we'll come home with one shoe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. That's, it's pretty interesting, pretty interesting. Um, oh, the baseball field. Yeah, I'm going to, I think I should take you there. I mean, we can go on forever with the art part, but I know oh. the guys don't want to see that. They want to see this train stuff. Actually, all the art stuff they can find on Google search through. All right. Yeah. So like I said, uh, there's gonna, there's so much content in this video. I, I really have to break it into two, and maybe even three. Um, and as you heard in this video, there was a little bit of feedback, and I gotta apologize to Joe and Mark because I think it was my fault. I don't really have the best equipment yet to be doing all this. Anyways, uh, so in next video we're gonna be talking about model railroading. Honest. You know, <laughs> sometimes people are just too interesting to have everything all in one video. And the art part, 
oh, really is an integral part of who Mark Williams is. And then in next video, we're going to talk to uh, Joe and Mark. We're going to talk to Joe about the new club that they have in Kingsville. And uh, we're going to talk to Joe and Mark about uh, the, the baseball stadium, um, just a bunch of different stuff. We're going to talk about 3D printing, what they've done with it, uh, show a little video of their animated models that they're using their 3D printing with. It's all great stuff and I hope you uh, come back for the next video. It's probably going to be a week or two and I might put in an interview between now and then with another modeler. Uh, just because we might, if the echo is too bad, I'm going to go and re retake some of the video just because, you know, uh, my good friends here, they deserve the best video I can provide to them. So I hope you liked the video. Please like and subscribe and share this video in the forums that you, uh, you play in, you know, you share your work, share this video with your friends. Um, I'm not allowed to post uh, these videos on certain websites anymore, so uh, if you know what I mean, pass it along, eh? Talk to you later, guys. I hope you like the video.